All right, what's up, everyone? It's Winslow. Let's uh, do a little track breakdown of my most recent-ish, I don't know, whenever this video comes out, you know what it is. Midwest Shuffle, out on the Forza Horizon soundtrack. Is that what it's called? Forza Horizon sound, anyway. That one, it's in the game. It's pretty cool, I have a tune in the game. And yeah, I'm surprised I picked this one because I made one that's a whole story. We'll talk about it later. Anyway, if you haven't heard the tune, it sounds a little like this YouTube don't take down my track, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Midwest Shuffle. If you haven't heard it, that's the first like couple of bars of it. You should hear the rest. It's pretty cool. Get to this whole orange area over here. Madness. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty straightforward of a tune. Yeah, let's just go bit by bit. I'll do all the the fun info later about that. So it's mostly just. Really just use the drums. Bass. They're all like run by the sample. Which began from this main sample Which is just chopped up and looped, which is this sample from Splice. So you can kind of hear it. It's pitched up. Then it affects. Yeah, and it's mostly that. The entire time, which now makes sense for like a racing game. Yeah, but this like didn't start off as a racing, as for Forza at all. It was just like another tune in the pool, in the beginnings of like all the hospital, not the beginnings, like the middle of like getting tunes and stuff ready for hospital at this point. I think San, no, Sandwood Nights was, no, none of, none of this was done yet. Nothing. I wasn't even officially signed yet. Like we were still talking, but it was leaning that way. Anyway, track, let's do how we normally do these breakdowns. Let's go with the drums. So we got his kick. My good old 2.35 kicks to every <laughs> clap ratio or whatever. Um, just taken from, what's the tune? Uh, walk a mile, that one. That's the kick, same kick. A few other tunes probably, They're like a snare clap kind of thing that I made at some point from a, some other tune, which is why it's like named mine for some reason. Let's look. Yep. And then there's a whole lot of percussion and loops. So here we go. We got a like a acou acoustic clap, hand clap. Break. Just adding a bit of shuffle. Another one, some extra. Yeah. Extra hits. A perspective drum loop. Shout out, Charlie. Just a little shaker. Tambourine. Where else we got? Another break. A little percussion deal. It's just looped over and over. So these are just bits and pieces of breaks. Chopped, looped, moved around. Yeah. In normal fashion, it's no like scientific thing. It's just, let's see what works. Throw it at the wall. I fought with these drums for a while. 
hi-hat that I've used a ton coming out of contact studio drummer nothing, nothing special there it's a lot of effects um, like mix wise to get to sit how I want what is this oh it's like a little sound yeah that's in there comes in later and then there's my good old trusty shaker that I stick in every tune it just ties it all together like a nice carpet, says the dude. <laughs> anyway, stupid reference. Here we go. And then an amen. Yeah, and when this was like on, like definite, we're going towards Forza, but we need some else or we can't take the tune kind of thing, which more is in my head. They didn't actually say that, but these are the last two things I had because the drums felt empty before I added these two things in there. Yeah, it sounds kind of empty, and then you add the shaker. It pulls it together. Hey man, just adds all the extra energy. And I just, you know, drag it throughout the whole tune. And that's how that goes. Here's my outside. Yes, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. My normal, like, again, if you've seen any of these, it's kind of like I do the same thing, just kind of routine of all the percussion goes in the percussion bus, which then goes into the full drums. It's a little bit of compression through Camel Crusher, saturation, that kind of thing. EQ, not doing much because I did most of it in there on each channel. There's just EQs, EQs, EQs. That's it, really. I would sound selection important as always. I'm not going to say that in this case, all these had their important things, but the shaker and the amen do the most work. Yeah. Then two compressors, one to just duck out the initial transient of the kick. So that pops through and initial transient of the snare. So that pops through. If I take them, I mean, it's subtle, but. Yeah, just so everything hits like I wanted to. Drums, going through an EQ, add some low end. Add, it was kind of, I don't know. I feel like this was, I went back and forth on this. Mostly because I have, especially then, I had like a habit of over-processing stuff. And I think I might have went too far into like the thin and like, not really hitting route and then, you know, tracks, years, not years, like a couple of more projects, kind of revamping how I was mixing, especially like, cause I started this last December, it says December 1st, 2020. And then over the course of the next few months to like the summertime was working on it. And I was like, I gotta learn. I gotta not relearn, but re um, and think how I approach mixing and what I want to like achieve in the mix, which is why my tunes now, a year later, I think sound a whole lot better. But yeah, so this is like, you can tell I'm adding in more frequencies than cutting is what I was getting at the long version. Then a little saturation, not much camel fat EQ, some weird peaks, taking away any stereo stuff because I think the drum verb it's all, yeah, it's all going through a drum verb. Yeah. And then the limiting. You following so far? It's kind of boring. <laughs> Nothing crazy, just to chop off the tops. The little spikes. Which helps with the mastering thing. There's a utility plugin, which is normally like automating volume. So like it kind of fades out towards the end of things and yeah. And that's the drums. Nothing crazy. Like this is maybe like my lowest um, amount of effort kind of drums. It's more just like each individual part playing its part. A couple of some EQs here and there and it's good. You know, this is uh, the vibey tune. It's one of those. 
All right, bass, here we go. Bridges the sub and the roads. Nice sub from Spire. It was kind of my go-to for a good harmonic kind of sub. And then a Rhodes from Contact. It's called something else because it's a Scarby A200, which is a Rhodes without the official trademark, basically. And that's going through a bunch of, mostly going through Camel Fat, actually, being crushed through there. And then uh, it's delay to give it some stereo effect. Right now it's it's some to mono, but if I go over here in the open part, now it's left, right, bigger sound. And just automate that with this binaural pan, which basically is automate the mono or not mono. So like in this part where it's all sample that gets like the the focus like the mid bass is there to you know in a utilitarian kind of way to serve a purpose of filling up that range and adding a bit more grit on top of the sub but once you get here it's more it's the focus so it's open it's wider a bit more present not rolled off all that's automated. Yeah. Yeah. So that's for as long as far as the sub's concerned, that's it. I tried some other sounds. You can see they're kind of in there. There's like a upright bass that comes in for like feels, but like it's you feel it, but it doesn't really do much. I left it in there. <laughs> uh, so like a bass guitar. And then there's this sound, which was the original bass sound, I think. And I just left it in there for the break breakdown. Probably silent. Yep, it's silent. Don't want to download that now. And that's being automated into some reverb and other stuff. Yeah. Bass, simple. Again, vibes driving through. All right, so most important thing is this sample. So again, started from that one supply sample I told you, chopped that up, arranged it, looped it. Why is it a little clipped? Yeah, let me zoom out of there. Same thing over and over. But that didn't fit by itself. It's kind of, it's not, it just needs some reinforcement, some layers. So I took the sampling route again and made some strings. I just made the chords, but use contact. So uh, if you come down here to these muted channels, you can listen to it. And that's just kind of following the chords are the, the assumed chords in these sample chops. And then I chopped them up and rearranged, basically mimicked what the sample's doing. And it's very mechanical sounding, but the sample it helps yep and then same thing it says strings but it's a different sound i think it's this organ sound no i tried doing that yeah i was gonna do the i was gonna do those chopped the same way but i end up not using it and just use it as like a pad during like the breakdown so it comes in then it's keys too which is a different roads mostly actual roads like sample i didn't do it it's probably from piano book but uh yeah 
So these, I know these, these chops are just a different instrument. They are in contact that I chopped the exact same way. So. Put a little auto pan on it. Makes it interesting. Reversed it for that fade in. And all together you get V main riff. Yeah, then the second drop for what, four, six, 32 bars? I had one more thing in there just to give you a little layer. It's a like choir sample. So, panning back and forth too. It was real subtle. As in it doesn't like scream out of the sample, but it adds a little layer. Like, in the full mix, you definitely feel it. And the only reason I hear it myself when I'm listening is because I know it. I put it there, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's the main sample. Then it goes through its own bus. So all those four tracks that make up the whole thing are bust together. And then a ton of effects to get them to fit together. Which, you know, approaches are different. I could have done it individually, but I do love just lumping things in the one bus and seeing what I can get away with. So with no effects, it sounds like. It's kind of muddy. There's lots of EQs because there are lots of um, resonances and things and filter and bypass and stuff. Some stereo bits to help it widen out and really feel, fill out the spectrum, the soundstage, and all these effects are these bypass deals. Oh, these are for the drop when it goes in. And all that's doing is taking off the reverb and the delay. So yeah, that's it, that's that. And then the rest, extra, what's extra? Oh, that's how I made everything. These are all the the sample layers, sample layers, basically. So all I did was take the the chords, or I assumed whatever the chords were, just trying to kind of feeling around of the main sample after I cut it up, copied those to like strings, keyboards, whatever, bounced those out, and then chopped that audio the same way I did the original sample. So it still has that like triggered and cut feel of like sampled hip hop, that kind of thing. But what I've been doing now, see a whole year later now, like sampling is my like deal. This is the beginning. I'm still no better at it, but you know, maybe a little bit. Anyway, there's some string bits here, harmony. Bloop, doop, doop. Just contact, nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, stuff during a breakdown is an arpeggio, an arp, nope, no it's not, yeah it is, breakdown. This is stole, not stolen, but you know, I first use this sound in Mumbles of Grace, that's what it's from, and I really like it. Then organ, contact. churchy feel, the original sample's like a gospel thing, the nice roads to go on top, add a bit of flavor, then there's also a regular piano, good old Spitfire Lab soft piano, and yeah, again all that kind of just works together to push it along. So remember, like this is the big open bass part. Yeah, and this section is just like, again, those assumed, I keep calling them assumed chords, because I don't know what to say. But 
from the sample chops, I just built on it and kind of changed up the voicing here and there. It would clash if you could hear the sample a bit more, but because it doesn't, and the sample's more bed, a pad at this point, I can play around with chords and chord voicings. And I want to say I, I did not play these in. I just programmed them in. That's all right. I could play it if I wanted to. Yeah, so what we got C major sharp major seven, which I never play in my life. Let's call it D flat. C sharp sounds stupid. G sharp major seven, always major seven chords. Beautiful D over F. That's fine. I'm just looking. I know what they are, but again, I don't like think and music theory. I just kind of know it at this point or hear it. And then once you when you follow a sample, it's kind of easy to just do what the sample does. And last but not least, not last, almost last, pads, contact pads, Nexus. It's like my favorite pad from like when I started producing. Original Spitfire strings. It's like the thirty-five dollar like string library. That's pretty good, but not like the four hundred dollar one. You know. Epic strings, what's that? It's like an ambient version of those same strings, which you can barely hear. I wonder what I did there. You yeah, a pad from Spitfire Labs again. Up here. Ambient stuff. Yeah, nothing crazy. Mo I mean, Labs and Spitfire stuff are more or less presets, so. Take it what you will. And then here's the, the we go to like effects. So effects is all like filter sweeps and risers and stuff. I don't need to go into that. It's like an amen for the breakdown. If you remember any of those like bootlegs I did around 2020, 2019, like the, uh, the more roller stuff, I'm me trying rollers, like the, the it's jazzy and then the spice weasel and then that's my tune. Um, what's the other one? Yeah, around that time. Techers, I would just throw this in there just cause. There's a crowd clap. Give it a live feel. Yeah. There's some vocal bits in there. There's this. There's a field recording of me standing under an underpass. Like a highway underpass by a river. You can hear me getting out of my car or going into it. Hitting like cars flying by, which now makes a whole lot of sense. Because it's like, it feels like cars are racing. And this isn't a racing game. And for a racing game, you know, it's kind of on the nose. I did not plan that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the last thing, there's this vocal sample, which is me yelling into a microphone. Me complaining. Um, if I play the original thing, you know, you'll know what it's from. You can kind of read the name. There's uh, some dissonance. No, that's not what I wanted to do. So some outtakes from my tune, Dissonance, like vocal outtakes. And uh, yeah, when I just get pissed that I can't get the lyrics right. All right, so the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's all it is. But when you pitch it down, then take out the the curse word, as I would call it, because I'm a teacher and I can't curse. Students watch these probably. And put in some effects. You get and slow it down. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even take it out. It's there. It's just real slow. So now when you listen, you can know that I was just like rage quitting. <laughs> but it just has a, it has a cool effect in the tune. Also, if you want that sample pack of vocals from vocal outtakes or whatever, it's on Patreon. Just like this video was and is on Patreon early for all the homies, the subscribers. I appreciate it. And if you're watching this afterwards... You feel like uh, tossing a little support my way? Yeah, I greatly appreciate it. That's how these things get done. I do them anyway, you know what I mean? But hey, I swear I'm bored on a Sunday. Anyway.
It just adds more effect, you know? It's personal, it's me. And that, folks, is Midwest Shuffle. Basically, that's it. Yeah, that's the tune. I think I want to say it came together in a few months. Let me let me check actually. Let me see when the the last bounce was. So the bounce the pre master was what? I mean, what day did I do that? Because I'll show you the timeline. June thirteenth, twenty twenty one is when I sent it off for mastering. And I started it on December 1st, 2020. So a little over six months of not constantly working on it. It was always maybe like a few weeks here, a few weeks there, stick it in the folder for a few months until they're like, yeah, let's try this one and then finish it up. Um, fun fact, it was called Midwest Shuffle after I sent that off because... Wait, I just looked at the folder. Does it still say it? Let me let me check. It used to be called um, Burrito Junction. <laughs> that's what I, that's what, yep. See, Burrito Junction V4, 1, 2, and then I sent it off as pre-master Burrito Junction, then got an email saying, uh, yeah, this is for Microsoft. You might want to call it something else. So I came up with Midwest Shuffle while I was out doing something. Just like, I need to reply to this now. Normally, I'm good with coming up with names, but, uh, yeah. And I was full on ready to just let Burrito Junction be what goes on Forza. <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, yeah, that's Midwest Shuffle by yours truly. Hope you like it. If you're playing Forza, hit me up. I'll play with you. Gamer tag is Winslow XYZ. Or if you like to tune, I appreciate it. Any, anyway. Anything else? I don't know what a cat is. Later. That's it.